Enough. Carry your paper and your viral. <laughs> Whatever you don't want again, write it down. That is enough. You have endured enough. You have cried enough. Write it down. God wants to put to an end permanently the activity of the wicked in your life. I had to go and look for this bulletin. It kept appearing to me in the dream. <laughs> so I was searching everywhere. I searched all my emails. I said, where is it? Where is it? So as I dozed off, the Holy Ghost was showing me where it is in the office. <laughs> enough is enough. You will not cry again, no? Yeah. I said, enough is enough. That marital disappointment is enough. Yeah. That delayed promotion is enough. That perpetual lack is enough. Amen. That attack of spirit husband and spirit wife is enough. Amen. That cost that I've been making your life miserable is enough. Amen. You're not saying amen like someone that believes. By the time this service will be over, whatever is behind that plague in your life, the vengeance of God will strike in your favor. Amen. I say the vengeance of God will strike in your favor. Papa instructed yesterday that whatever we consider enough which we are not willing to tolerate again, we should write it down so that in this anointing service, vengeance will cut the thing off. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Amen. Have you written your own down? Okay, even if you don't want to write, be be watching us like United Nation Observer. Are you here? I'm saying that you are free to observe. I, you know, bring out the paper, Lord, in, with the instruction of your servants. Whatever has been written on this paper today, it is written: affliction will not rise the second time. Today, O oh Lord, make an end the works of the wicked. Amen. By the anointing, judge the oppression of the enemy. Amen. Lift up your voice and pray now. Lord, I will not cry over any matter written here. I will not beg. I will not be reproached over any matter written here. In the name of Jesus, let this anointing service for this enough in enough service answer for me. Answer for me. You have done it before. Lord, do it again. You have done it before. Lord, do it again. You have done it before. Lord, do it again. Let this anointing service answer for me. You have done it before. Lord, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. In Jesus' name we pray. Just like the testimonies that were shared, Lord, for everyone that have made up their mind that they will not see this issue troubling, making them cry again, by the anointing, settle everyone. Let this anointing service be the anointing for settlements. Settle your people with blessing. 
execute vengeance upon the wicked Amen. whoever is your troubler today the anointing will cut them off Amen. any sponsor of attack on any issue of your life I decree by the anointing they will be terminated amen. say amen like a believer amen. whoever vowed a vow against you in the name of the God of David Oyedepo Jesus Christ of Nazareth I decree let this anointing service today lay them to rest amen. say amen like a believer so shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Take your seats. God bless you. Don't throw away that paper. We are going to use it in some minutes now. If you are not growing in love, concerning Jesus, scripture said, and the child grew. So growing is your personal responsibility. And the child grew and worked strong in spirit. And the grace of God was upon him. Growing in God is a tax. You can't grow in love without growing in God. One proof that you are growing in God is that science and wonders is cheap. And this sign shall follow them that believe in my name. In my name they shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. They shall cast out devils. Your love for God is what determines the measure of signs you carry. Your love for God. I and the children God has given to me, they are for signs and for wonders. You are for sign, but you need something that will trigger it. Growing in God. By growing in love. By growing in love, we mean increasing your affection for God and the house of your God. Attending Sunday service alone does not mean that you are growing in God. As some people, it's only on Sunday you see them. That does not mean that you are growing in God. You are just observing a spiritual obligation. So that uh, all the people going out, you know, never bear hold my key for me. <laughs> so you are now the uh, watch day for all the people that are going out. Likewise, you can be in church and not be in touch. You can be in church and not be in touch. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you forsake him, he will also do what? Forsake you. One sure proof that you are growing in love is that your heart is after the advancement of the church. Kingdom advancement. You can't truly pursue kingdom advancement and be on the same spot. You can't be on the same spot spiritually. Family wise, financially, career wise, there must be obvious changes taking place in series, one after the other.
the love of God is not just the principal nature of God. That is what defines our actual future in life and destiny. So if you have a limited love, you have limited future. You have limited future. You'll be struggling. There's what we call suffering and smiling. You know, some people, they are suffering and they are smiling. There is no suffering that is comfortable. Am I saying the truth? If you are not growing in love, I want to let you know, you are increasing your suffering frequency. Nobody is responsible. You are responsible. So if nothing is driving your heart towards God, nothing will move God towards you. Draw near unto me, and we draw near unto you. Now, even naturally, who get your time, now you get in time. Am I saying the truth? You don't get my time, I don't get your time. You don't value me, I don't value you. A wise man said, you can't hold me like a pinch of salt and expect me to carry you like a bag of rice. Am I correct? Your value for God is what determines your value for life. Your value for God. Is what determines your value for life. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. Go and check his value for God. Life is a function of value. If you don't have value for God, you will be a non-entity in life. Because who adds value to you is God. It's not your work. Because your work can disappear. Your work can be collected by witchcraft. Who value you is who you value. Who despise you do you celebrate? It's not possible. Can you be making a mockery of me now and I'll be clapping hand for you? Your head no correct. So if you want to experience feasible change, that is change that can be seen. Change that can be celebrated. Change that can be talked about. Let your heart begin to run after God. David said, my love and my affection is set towards the house of my God. And here this, nobody places a limit on how far you can go in God. The farther you want to go, God will go with you. He will be taking you farther. He said, as far as your eyes can see. As far as your eyes can do what? See. As far as your eyes can see. Papa said, the era when they say, brethren, let's go together is over. Now is if you want to go, follow me. You know those days where the church was two or three, I gather, he said, brethren, let's go. But now it's no longer brethren, let's go. Are you hear what I'm saying now? Uh -huh. If you like, come. So if you like, don't come. Someone will take your place. And you know how, to, how it is when someone takes your place. You will not be fighting. That's my chair. Stand up. Say, so I will stand up. <laughs> now, who has been in this situation that um, in an office, a promotion that was meant for you, somebody collected it? Who has experienced that before? Pretenders. <laughs> this book can pretend eh? Praise God. <laughs> you can never be comfortable. Am I saying the truth? Yes, now there are things that makes life uncomfortable. The best thing that can happen to you 
is to be in your right place at the right time, meeting the right opportunity and the right people. Right place, right time, right opportunity, right people. By so doing, you are not behind life. And life is not behind you. You are on course with God's plan and purpose for your life. You are on course. But what defines it is your love for God. Notice now where you place God will determine where he will place you. Where you place God in your life will determine where he will place you on this earth. So our placement can be defined. Once it is defined, it is settled. So pursuing kingdom advancement is one major tool any one of us here can use to advance his life. Life is designed for advancement. That's why scripture said the path of the just is like a shiny light that shines brighter and brighter onto a perfect day. Even native doctor is angry with stagnation. Oh, you don't know? They are not happy when customers are not coming. Poverty is not good, whether to a believer or unbeliever. But every one of us defines how far we can go by our heart for God. By our heart for God. So when you make up your mind for a change, things begin to change. Things does not just change because you wish them. Things begin to change because you act on them. It is what you act on that changes around you. I met an artist one day. Thank God for knowledge. He was so angry. He said he hated to hear the word Christian. He hated to hear the word Christian. And by my look on him, you can visibly see poverty. Say with me, poverty. Just as you can see prosperity, you can see poverty. I allowed him to talk and the Holy Ghost just gave me one wisdom. Say with me, one wisdom. I said, even with what you are saying now, you believe something. He said, yes. I have a philosophy for life. I said, your philosophy is based on a belief. I said, yes. He said, yes. I said, good. Now, if the philosophy you have keeps you like this, it's a bad philosophy. I said, look at your bed. You don't have money to clean up. Look at your shirt, holes all round. Look at your slippers. All bend there. I said, you have a bad philosophy and it has not changed you. Meaning, where you claim you have a belief is keeping you in bondage. But Jesus can make your life better. I said, I wouldn't mind buying clothes for you if you are going to accept them. I'm only showing you the goodness of God. He sat down and did like this. He said, wait a minute. I said, no, it's now. Do you know what? What they claim that they believed is bondage. Anything you believe that is not changing you or moving you forward is a wrong belief. For the first time in his life, he agreed to go to church. I didn't open the Bible, say, the, I didn't use the Bible, say, I used what he knows. What he knows. And that was the end. Now I'm saying to you if what you claim to know has never moved you forward, there is need for you to change. Paul said, For we know in part. What you know is in part. Anything you know now is in part. And we understand in part. You know the other part that will increase your value. 
Loving God is beyond the choice. Don't forget this. Loving God is beyond the choice. Why? You cannot disconnect from the one that holds your life. God is love. Not like. Not us. God is what? Loving God is beyond a choice. It's a must. If life must deliver to you the true value, then your heart, say with me, my heart, must reconnect back to God. Must reconnect back to God. The moment you reconnect back to God, things begin to reflow for you. Things begin to turn around for you. Things begin to flow for you. Things begin to turn around for you. Can you lift yourself? Can you lift yourself? You can buy yourself a car, but you can't give yourself Johnny Mercy. You can sleep on water bed, but you can't wake up in the morning. The psalmist said, I sleep, I slept and I woke up because the Lord preserved me. Who has heard of waking tablets? Who has heard of, you have heard of sleeping tablets? We have volume 5, volume 10, volume 20. But we don't have volume wake up. Am I correct? If you woke up, God woke you up. Meaning there is someone that holds life. There is someone that holds life. They were showing a story uh, of a young man in Singapore. He slept and he didn't wake up. So his friends, after two days, went and broke the door. Maybe they sent one winch from his village to come and collect him. You know, in the realm of the spirits, there is no barrier. Disconnecting yourself from God is disconnecting yourself from love. So our going forward, making progress, recording success in this life is tied to the love of God because God is love. So the love of God is not an option. It is a must. It is not a choice. It is beyond a choice. No wonder. <laughs> the prophet said, if God be God, serve him. If God be what? Do what? So growing in love is not only growing in God, it is growing in blessings. Your progress level in life is measured by your love for God. You can't be increasing your love for God and be reducing in blessings. No! God does not reduce, he only increases. For us, oh, for him, it changes not. So as you are growing in love, you are making progress. You are advancing. You are changing levels. Spiritually, you are changing levels. Financially, you are changing levels. Career-wise, you are changing levels. All round change begins to take place for you. Or should I say something here? It is impossible for you to grow in love without growing in consecration. What does it mean to be consecrated? Renewed heart. You can't grow in love without growing in consecration. Maybe you might have made a mistake one way or the other. 
There is room for repentance. There is room for renewal. Everybody seated in church now has what we call an internal policeman called the conscience. There are things you can fake for every person around you, but your conscience will still be telling you, you are still wrong. What you are doing is bad. You can silence everybody. You can never silence your conscience. Because when you finish, it will still tell you when you are lying down or when you are faking it, it will tell you, this thing you are doing is taking you back. It's not moving you forward. You are going back. Our conscience is like our spiritual checkup. It checks everything we do. Every move we make. Whether good one or bad one. It will tell you, you will not go far by going this way. So your conscience, first of all, judges your action. Judges your motive. Judges the things you say. Judge the way, the places you go. It is your conscience that prepares you for consecration. That's why the psalmist says, if I regard the iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. No wonder when you kneel down and you want to pray, when you kneel down and you want to pray, your conscience will tell you, have you confessed first? Have you told God this thing you are doing? He says, stop that prayer, stop that prayer. Confess first. I know some people will not like this type. Scripture says, he that covereth his sins shall not do what? He that covereth his errors, he that covereth his wrongdoing, he that covereth his wrong saying. Do you know, you can be in church because of pride. Say with me, pride. pride. Can never open their mouth and say, I am sorry. That I am sorry is like when they say it, it's like their whole status will just collapse. People that find it hard to say, I am sorry, both to man, they cannot say it to God. Lord, I'm sorry. They can't say it to they can't say it. But you know what? Whatever you keep hiding, keep caging you. Keep putting you in prison. It keeps locking you up. You can't assess God and you can't assess good. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. Can't prosper. But one thing I know Consecration prepares us for fresh oil. Joshua chapter 3 and verse 5, he says, Consecrate yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things in your midst. Consecration prepares us for fresh oil. The more the consecration, the fresher the oil. The fresher the oil. The fresher the oil. Lay aside every weight and the sins that thus easily besets every weight and the thing that besets you. If you don't lay them aside, they will lay you to rest. If you don't drop them, they will drop you. If you don't reject it, they will make you rejected. So it's your choice. Do you want to grow? This is the way out. Do you want to make progress? The prodigal son said, I will arise and go back to my father. I will arise and go back to my father. It's time to say enough is enough to that setback. Do you know there are attitudes you need to give up so that life does not drop you? There are habits that must be dropped so that things will begin to work. It's time to say enough is enough. 
Even prostitutes with them, they tire. You never see prostitutes with tire. I don't see plenty. Of. There was one that came in Benin. What she needed was transport money to relocate. They brought her back. She was deported. She was deported from the country where she was uh, doing business. You know, I hope you know to them it's business. When the mother saw her, the mother said, wherever you are coming from, go back home. Go back! No, be your mate. They bring motor. No, be your, what you don't bring up? Go back. She said, Pastor, I don't tire. You go to walk, they go to collect the money. They go to collect money. That's how her mouth was sharp. Oh. You go to walk, they go to collect money. They only give you money to just go buy Indomie, eat. And when you seek, they will just leave you like that. Oh. Pastor, I don't tire. I'm not going home. Anyhow, one I want to help me, help me. So I now ask her, who brought you? You now say it's one member that brought her. So I went and called the member, tried to trace the home cell, trace the district coordinator, then the home cell pastor. I said, do you have any family member outside Benin? He said, yes. My sister, there, Saba. Ma, go there, ma, go there. <laughs> In my spirit, I was not too sure. So what I had to do was to call our pastors in Asaba so that someone would go and hand her over. He said, but not to stay this Bini, I know we'll stay. If I stay, she go catch me, send me back. She said she don't tire. You never tire. <laughs> you never tire. Say with me, enough is enough. <laughs> now, there are things you must drop. If not, life cannot change. Life can never be sweet doing the wrong things. I'm the one telling you, life can never be sweet for you. You will live in perpetual agony. Every day is sorrow for you. When you keep doing the wrong things, To someone, that is the beginning of enough is enough. <laughs> you know the funniest thing? Someone came to church from the boy's friend's house. He's in church. They want to come and do a mighty. Came from your boyfriend's house and you came to do a mighty service. Enough is enough. If Nagari you go drink to live where? Enough is enough. And the person is even bold. Though. Say go marry me. You don't go, you don't go see your papa. Or you don't go see your mama. You never see anyone. It's okay. Something will happen to you today. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. If you go back to that house, see your punishment. It go beat you. It go use beds design your body. I decree it on this altar. You go see. Go back again today. Today, go back again. You will meet commotion you have never met before. And the person came to drop the person in church. Who came to drop you in church. Enough is enough. Sisters, I'm begging you. You don't have foul brain. 
I say you don't have foul brain. You can walk. You can do something. Are you hearing me now? You can do something. Don't be deceiving yourself. I'm a graduate. Graduate. First degree. Linda Ikeji was a graduate. She's still a graduate. There's a place for beginning small. As I speak with you now, monthly, any month where there is bad market, 200 or 250 million. I've checked her profile. She's not even doing any serious thing. It's just blogging. Blogging! Which you can learn. Because every day, WhatsApp, Facebook. Go and sit down and learn something reasonable. I'm talking to somebody. And your parents will be thinking that you are in Lafia and you are doing well. They will be thinking you are doing well. You are not doing well. One day you will reach village. Won't you reach village? You go reach village. Praise God. <laughs> Tell your neighbor enough is enough. enough, enough. Let today mark a turning point in your heart towards God. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Someone is saying, tell them, tell them. I will talk your own now. <laughs> tell them, pastor, tell them. It's because your own have not come in the open, Abby. We will soon hear your own. I say we will soon hear your own. Yeah. Whatever anyone wants to become in this kingdom, because you are a kingdom, Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. Whatever you want to become in this kingdom, you need violence. Tell your neighbor, I need violence. You don't take anything in life by choice. You take things in life by force. Force. Jesus said, since the day of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. So you are not permitted to take anything without violence why there is enough contention already going on because of you forces are contending against you the laws of nature are working against you you need force God said for a great door and effectual is open unto us but there are many adversaries So if you lack spiritual violence, you are bound to lack blessings. If you lack spiritual violence, you will lack progress. I like the way Bishop Abiyah puts it. He says your Goliath in life depends on where you are going. Your warfare in life is determined on how far you want to rise. If you are confronted in life, hear this, is because of the kind of open doors you want to see. If you are looking for big doors to open, expect big confrontations. Expect big resistance. Don't say, why, why are people always against me? It is natural. If you see any person that people always like, know that something is wrong with him. Jesus said, woe is you when men speak well of you. 
Woe. Woe means cost. Pastor, why is it that people are always against me? It is natural. It's a normal rule of life. If you are, if you are prospering now, your prosperity will make some people to be angry. Some will be envious. Some will be looking for how the business will close. Are you there first? They did it to Isaac. Scripture says when God blessed Isaac, the Philistines envied him. He dug the first well, they closed the well. He dug the second one, they closed it. He dug the third one, they left him alone. So everything good in life must be contended by wickedness. Don't wait for people to like you. I've always said this. I will say it again. You don't need to like me before we reach where God has in mind for me. I don't need you to like me. The jargon you have been saying, I've never stopped one of God's plan for my life. Because God didn't consult you when he made the plan. You are not God's cancer, Sam. You are not PA to God. You are not special advisor on when I will be promoted or when blessing will enter my hand. The day God stop, start taking counsel from you to determine anybody's blessing, it ceases to be God. That's why he said, I am the Lord, I change it not. He said again, my counsel shall stand and I will do all of my good pleasure. But hear this. I know there are many going through unbearable circumstances. Touchy situations. Painful hardships. We read in Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 3. Studio put that scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 2. You have compassed this mountain long enough. Say with me, long enough. enough. You have compassed it long enough. It's a turn. Turn. Turn ye not was. You don't cope with situations that are against God's plan and purpose for your life. You go against them. You deal with the opposition. You don't cope. You don't bear. You don't tolerate the things that are against God's plan and purpose for your life. You go against them. In Mark chapter 6, time will fail me to read it. I don't want to go that far. Scripture says, and Jesus gave them power against Say with me, power against. The power of God is not for everything. It's against some things. When things are working against God's plan and purpose for your life, the power of God goes against them. He gave them power against. Against sickness. He gave them power against affliction. He gave them power against So you don't get along with frustration. You don't get along with stagnation. You don't get along with hardship. You don't get along with barrenness. You don't get along with repeated disappointments. You go against them. Jesus said, I give you power against them. So today, say with me today. You will stop going along. You will start going against if you are saying amen, say better. Amen. amen. You don't go along, you go against. In the natural, in the natural, when people are not comfortable with the way you are making progress, they begin to go against you. 
Am I correct? It's very simple. It's very natural. Don't expect everybody to go along with you. Expect some to go against you. I like what one of my friends said. He said, he who will go far with you will not stress you. He who will go far with you will not make your journey difficult for you. God himself even know how to organize the dropping of who will not go far with you. He has a way of organizing it. It will be an error in your life or in your destiny to cope with stagnation and begin to open your mouth and say, God will do it one day. Which one is one day? Shall we are in today? Tomorrow is what? So after tomorrow, there is another tomorrow. After that tomorrow, there is another tomorrow. When is your one day? When is your one day? Faith is potent the day you make up your mind for the change. Maybe you have not known before, but I want you to know this now. Heaven permits violence for the righteous. So if you are not daring, if you don't venture, you suffer your future. I like the way Bishop Abiyah puts it. No fight, no progress. You either fight or something will be fighting you. No contention, no contentment. You are either fighting and making progress or you are not fighting and something will be fighting you. No war, no peace. That is why spiritual warfare is our platform to experience change in life. The day you rise up against a challenge, you have confirmed the end of that challenge. The day you rise up against an unbearable situation, you have confirmed the end of that situation. Proverbs 23 and verse 18 says, surely there is an end. There is an end. Every problem has an expiring date. Every situation has an expiring date. Surely there is an end. And thy expectation shall not be cut off. It cannot be cut off. Because your mind has defined the end. Second Corinthians chapter 10 Verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. To the pulling down of strongholds. You don't fight spiritual battles with physical weapons. And you don't ignore that these battles are there. You engage spiritual battles to end them. I heard God's servant Bishop Papa said, when they attack, attack back. When they shoot, shoot back. When they fire, fire back. I want to say to someone here, the forces that kept you in that condition, they will be buried today. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better. Amen. amen. Whatever you see around your life that is not pleasant to you, you are entitled to end it. Permit me to say this. The attack of the enemy is normal. Anybody can be attacked. Am I saying something to someone? Anybody can be attacked.
But resisting the attack is your choice. If you don't resist them, they will launch again. That's why they say whatever you tolerate is permitted to remain. Whatever you don't tolerate, you are bound to confront. You are bound to fight back. Enough is enough. Tell your neighbor, enough is enough. I remember a young man, he's not a sister now, he's a young man. Anytime he makes up his mind to marry, he will be having strange dreams of attacks. He couldn't understand where the attack is coming from. So the first thing that will come to his mind is that the girl is a winch or the girl is a marine. It happened the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one. It was the fifth one that happened that he now knew that something was wrong somewhere. The four of them, all of them cannot be bad. That day he made up his mind to confront his issues. An old woman appeared to him in the dream. So you want to marry? Let's see how you will marry. When he came to tell me, I said, ah, there's a strong woman that must go down for you so that you must marry. So I changed the prayer points. Strong woman, die. I know many of you don't like that prayer. But you will need it one day. So immediately he began to pray the prayer. There are some people you see in the physical. They may look very young and small. In the realm of the spirit, they are old winch. Someone now called him that uh, um, I saw you in a dream. You are planning to marry. This, this, is that. He came and told me. He didn't answer the person. I said, don't answer anybody. Continue the prayer. Guess what? As he continued the prayer, the lady died. If he had been breaking the sister's heart with a hammer, he wouldn't have married it to today. But when he made up his mind to confront his problem, God stood for him. I want to say to someone here, whatever has been fighting your marital destiny, we end today. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. I had one pastor who was a pastor assistant there. His wife was under regular attack. What was the attack? There are some things when you hear them, you'll be wondering, do such things exist? Yes, they do. His mother was sleeping with him in the dream. Have you heard of that type before? He came and told me that this is what is happening to him. I said, your mother is in a marine court. And she told the wife, my begin, what do you they worry yourself for? No, be me go worry whether I don't get picking or not. So the young man said, Pastor, I don't know how to confront this thing. I just gave him one prayer point. Whoever has vowed that I will not carry my baby, oh God, let the person swell up and die. As he started the prayer, the young, the young man, the mother now came and told him, my son, I'm your mother. That prayer you are praying is not good. <laughs> that prayer you are praying is not good. Just relax. God will do it for you. He came and told me, I said, fire prayer. <laughs> so he continued after the first week. The mother now said that she wants to confess. 
let him show him the person that did the thing. Now hear me. Evil people have connection. They are connected. So after I showed him the person that did the thing, the thing still didn't, didn't stop. I said, fire the prayer. When she was at the point of death, that was when she now so yeah, take me to your pastor. I was shocked when I saw both of them in church that day. And I said that uh, she wants to give her life to Christ. Someone was interpreting for me that uh, what she's doing, she knows is bad, but she can't help herself. She's not the one doing it. They have already um, covenanted. And um, as far as they are concerned, that his wife will not give her. I said, she will give birth. You will die. She will give birth. She will not give her life to Christ. As she gave her life to Christ, she disappeared. They were not seeing her again. I said, continue the prayer. She, she didn't give her life to Christ. You know, witches are hard. They may be opening their mouth, but their heart is hard. I said, continue the prayer. She resurfaced. She resurfaced. Do you know what I did this time? She renounced the thing and I now poured the oil inside her mouth. She fainted. I said, Mona, leave and go. If you want to die, may die here on a conqueror. She didn't die. She woke up. When she woke up, she began to vomit. The long and short of the story is that the wife gave birth. As the wife gave birth, she, I don't know, I, don't, I can't understand. She was on bed rest. God gave her bed rest so that she would not go and touch the baby. Because if she has touched the baby, it's to pluck another one. She will have initiated the child. But I want to say to someone here, whoever has cooked anything for you, today is the end. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better. Amen! Yeah. Let me summarize with this and we'll rise up to pray. Once your faith is made up, power will flow. And scripture said, it shall come to pass on that day that the body of enough is enough shall be taken away from thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. Let me say this and we rise up to pray. What a sister. Monitoring spirits, they have gone high tech. Someone closely monitored her to the point of picking her menstrual pad. As they did, she didn't know it came by revelation. Ladies, be careful. As they picked it, they fired an arrow for her. When they fired this arrow, she was going through all manner the day God revealed it. Say, Lord, whoever took a menstrual part should shoot arrow at her. Let the person bleed to death. I know you don't like that prayer. As they began the prayer, the person that did it in came out. Now let me say something to you. Whoever is monitoring your matter, Hear, hear what I'm going to say. If the person does not die today, if the person does not die under this anointing today, God didn't send Papa. But hear it and hear it well. Anyone that delights to see you in that terrible condition, vengeance will hit them today. As she began to pray, the person came out. How did the person know? The thing is beginning to answer back. 
Now all the things that she did to the girl began to fire back at her. Now hear me. One thing I know in deliverance, the wicked, say with me, the wicked, they don't like receiving the arrow they are shooting against you. They don't like receiving it. But today they will collect it. The owners of evil lay, they will carry their evil load. Whoever used your picture to lock you up, as you are coming out, they are entering prison. If you are saying a message, better error. Rise up to your feet now. Rise up to your feet. I'm going to give you six minutes to pray. You will be anointed and you will pray. I guarantee you, today we mark the end of the spell you are going through. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. If a strong man or a strong woman is involved in your matter, I, I bet you on this altar, the person will swell up and die. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Bring out that paper. Bring out that paper. All eyes closed, all heads bow. You are here, you are not born again. You want to make it right with Jesus wherever you are seated, inside and outside, under the sound of my voice. Put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I am a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord and be my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. If you pray that prayer wherever you are, come right now. I want to pray with you. God bless you. God just come right now. You don't need to waste time. Just come. Come. Don't stand here. If you are coming, come quickly.